Hello everybody, welcome back to the table. Today we are taking a look at a knife from Burnside Knives. This is the Rose. So this is Burnside's latest offering, and I thought some of you out there might have seen a glimpse of it here or there, and maybe wanted a bit more information, so here we are. This is the Rose, and first off, yes, it does share some familiar design characteristics with the Spyderco Dragonfly. At first glance, I couldn't really see anything else, but we are going to be making comparisons between the two knives, and it really isn't some carbon copy knockoff like some have feared. Stay tuned. First, we're going to take a look at the blade. We have here a folding knife with an overall open length of six and a quarter inches, with the blade here being about 2.6 inches long, with a cutting length of about 2.15 inches. The blade here comes in with a tanto design that is rather subtle and very acute angled, and I'm thinking with a few sharpenings, it's likely to look less and less like a tanto as time does go on. I think that this is one of the design elements that Burnside took a gamble on, since it is so non-traditional. The bonus to this, though, is the tanto blade. The tip here is super, super pokey. And as you can see, the blade has a large opening in it, and it could be used as an opening hole if you wanted to. But I'm thinking it's more cosmetic, and it's really one of those design choices that might leave some people scratching their heads since it's not really obvious what it's there for other than the design motif. We also have dual thumb studs to open the knife. Uh, they work really well, no problems there. The blade steel is a Hitachi VG-10. Now I am not sure if or how Hitachi VG-10 is any different from say the VG-10 that Spyderco uses in their Japanese made knives, but bringing that up, I'm not sure exactly where this knife is produced. We can assume either China or Taiwan, I don't see the country of origin anywhere listed on the Burnside website or in their materials, and they really should mention it as overseas production is so common these days that country of origin is no longer a negative like it would have been considered maybe, you know, 10 or so years ago. And while we're still looking at the blade, the design is mostly sterile, and the only markings it has are very small markings of Rose VG10 near the handle on the non-show side of the blade, and the Burnside logo is on the spine behind the jimping. And speaking of jimping, we have nice aggressive jimping on both the spine of the blade as well as in the finger choil. Our VG10 blade here runs on bearings and the action is nice and the detent works perfectly. We can check out the centering while we're at it. It is good centering, but I, I suppose if I really wanted to nitpick, I could say it's slightly leaning towards the show side. Lock up on the knife is good. There is no play in the blade when it is opened. And for a knife running on thumb studs, the fidget factor is still pretty high. The bearings make it a joy to open and close. So if fidgeting and playing around with the action is your thing, I think you'll be satisfied here. So let's take a look at the handle of the rose. We have G10 scales with an orange G10 backspacer. The G10 is about low to medium traction, I would say. Our G10 here also comes in a black and tan color as well, but looking at Burnside's social media, I am betting that more colors are likely to debut at some point as well. So the liners on this knife are steel, and when you take a look, they are thick, solid pieces, and I'm looking inside the liners, I don't see any skeletonization done for weight savings. So with our solid steel liners, G10 scales, our handle thickness comes in at about 13 and a half millimeters and puts the overall weight of the knife at 3.8 ounces. So the rose definitely fills the hand and despite being on the smaller side, you know, our pivot screw uses a T8 Torx bit and removing it was easy with no Loctite and no spinning pivot syndrome. The rest of the screws are T6 as well. Probably another standout feature on this knife that makes it really unique, of course, is this pocket clip. And so it has this lightning bolt shape to it that I have never seen on a knife before. Uh, it's a sculpted steel clip, and it works itself in, a, in and out of pocket pretty well. It's also reversible for left or right-hand side tip-up carry, and the reverse side has a filler tab that is removable and repositionable if you do want to switch it over. Our clip here is going to either be a hit or miss with the knife crowd, you either love it and are ordering this knife as we speak, or it just isn't your cup of tea at all. You know, it's going to be one or the other. After looking at this knife, let's make the most obvious comparison here, though. <laughs> 
and that is going to be with the Spyderco Dragonfly. You know, in photos, it looks like they just clearly ripped off the Dragonfly, the design and the shape, very much inspired by the small Spyderco. When you get them in hand, though, it's a kind of a different story emerges. As we place them side by side, you can start to see the differences. Similar shape, but while the Dragonfly is a super lightweight at a little over one ounce, the Rose is like a thick little tank, and it weighs over three times as much. So I'm thinking that we got the unique Tanto Blade on the Rose as, you know, one more way to kind of differentiate itself from the Dragonfly. You know, a drop point may have been a little too much on the nose for Spider Co. to really look the other way, design style-wise. But really, holding these two knives side by side, I cannot help but think these two are not exactly competing with one another. And while we're at it, I feel like I also need to mention the packaging the knife came in. The presentation and packaging with Burnside knives is excellent, if not among the best in the industry. Again, I will say I do not believe I've ever seen a knife company with branded tissue paper, but here we have it with Burnside. My knife was sent also with a black bandana as well. I can't say this will come with every knife, but it was a nice touch. The knife box is high quality, it has these nice topographic prints on it, and it was loaded with stickers, which again are appreciated. You know, presentation matters, and Burnside has realized this and invested appropriately in ensuring that every person opening the box with their new Burnside knife in it is going to have a smile on their face doing so. But with all these positives being said, let's take a look at the other side of the coin. You know, Burnside Knives is still a small player and relative unknown in the knife world. I personally kind of consider them part of this new wave of, you know, bro knife companies in a similar vein maybe to the James brand or even the defunct Quartermaster knives. They're small companies, you know, they primarily rely on social media marketing, you know, they build their audience and their customer base this way. And there's nothing wrong with building your business like that, um, but you need to realize you're dealing with a company that's primarily a lifestyle company. You know, they sell knives, but that's might not be what considered, you know, is their main bread and butter, so to speak. You know, they're not a, they're not a traditional knife company. And you can even take a look at the Burnside product line, and what you will see is more apparel and accessories and other things besides knives being sold there. So even following the company on social media, you can see they're super active, they post really frequently, you know, they openly wear all of their daily thoughts and their politics on their sleeve for everyone to see. And I think this approach generally rubs some people the wrong way, especially people who are in the old knife community, so to speak. And as a result, if you search for Burnside Knives on any knife-centric site, you tend to see a lot of skepticism regarding the company. You know, and I obviously try not to let that really influence me because this is actually my second knife from Burnside Knives, and both knives from them are fairly solid. So that's where I try to base all of my judgments on is the actual product they are delivering. You know, but the reason why I even mention all of this is I really want your opinion. So what do you think of the rose here? What do you think of Burnside Knives? Are knife nuts making it too hard for an up-and-coming business to make an impact? Or does this company just kind of raise your hackles in some way and make you want to steer clear? So let me know in the comments below. Hope you all have a great day and see you later. Bye-bye.